Hi, so today we're going to be making a uh, boot sector. Why would you want to make a boot sector? Uh, well, it's like the very start of a bare bones operating system. Boot sectors are like this big. Uh, this is a hex editor. It's not in dark theme. I, it angers me too. Um, I think it's only like 512 bytes. Um, I can actually check that if I just like look at the properties of one of them. Yep, 512 bytes. Boot sectors are 512 bytes, and I don't think they can get any bigger or any smaller. So all these zeros are here. This is like a very simple boot sector. You see a lot of like tutorials online showing you how to make your own operating system or whatever, and then there's just the people who are like, you can never make your own operating system or just use Linux or whatever. But writing your own operating system is a fun thing to try, especially if you love like low level stuff. Um, so here, uh, I'm pretty sure this is just a loop because this is all this boot sector does. As you can see, it consists of mainly nothing. And this at the end, um, I'm basing this off of a tutorial that um, somebody on GitHub released. You can literally just Google OS tutorial and you'll find it. I don't know how to say his name. Chef Noosa or whatever. So he calls these the magic numbers. Because these are the things that tell, or I think a, a boot manager is what it's called, what like that this is bootable like you can run this boot sector get out <laughs> boot sectors are supposed to be like hold on can I just like how do I turn on uh like do not disturb is it called focus assist yeah there we go priority only alarms there but this, the boot sector's main purpose is to load the main operating system, but we can write code directly into here and expect it to execute just fine. The only thing is, you're trapped within this 512 byte space. So keep that in mind. We're going to be writing it in assembly because assembly. Uh, there are things that you're going to need, and I'll show you how to set them up. You're going to need, here you go, Q, QEMU, QEMU, uh, you can just Google QEMU and then go and find the window bi Windows binaries. And I have like this build in the 2020 directory, and you're going to need NASM. Uh, so just like Google NASM assembler, or go to nasm.us and go get the release builds. I'm on 2.15.04 click on this and get it for uh, win32 it's it's important that you click win32 I think uh, because if you do win64 blah, blah blah something happens I don't know and then just get the installer make sure they're installed to program files and that's that's it you just make sure they're installed to program files and here's our directory. This is where we're going to be doing stuff. I might use like Vim just because, but uh, let's start doing stuff. So, um, we can just create a new text document here. And we're going to call this tools.bat. Bat is a batch file, and they're running the command prompt. Right click and edit it, it could open up in notepad, doesn't really matter. It's not a complicated language, doesn't need autocomplete or anything. I like doing uh, echo off. You can do echo hello and this will print stuff to the screen. This is just the basics of batch. But what I, re what I really need, I think I already wrote one of these, um, is I'm going to include, well I'm going to temporary, so whenever you open this tools.bat, I want it to include the QMU and NASM to uh, the path, like just temporarily and only for this file. And it's really easy to do. All you have to do is dot at, well, at set path, if I can type, equals, and then you can do C program files, NASM, 
and then do uh, semicolon and C program files QEMU and then in this might get rid of the rest of the path so you have to do path here and no need to put a semicolon at the end there and just do at percent percent com spec and now if you double click on it it'll open like a normal a seemingly normal command prompt but if you put in nasm it will say like no input file whatever and qmu also works so this is our like tool sort of um, I'll, I think I'm gonna use vim just because open up a, like a command prompt or something uh, okay so bootsect.asm that's just going to be our new file let me open up my other one so basics to assembly comments are started with a semicolon and you can put your comment here typically you put a space after the semicolon uh, so you can just say boot sector boot sector sector I don't know how to spell sector I'm, I'm just gonna put the file name boot section this is not required again it's a comment you can put like your copyright or whatever here whatever you want um, can I turn on numbers I like numbers yeah all right so here we can do loop uh, that's just a subroutine and we can do JMP loop. JMP, I think, stands for jump. I don't know. Uh, I think so. It's I like to say. So we got times five ten, and this 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 this, and DB. It stands for like displace bytes or something. And what this does is it fills like everything everything that's not used with like zero and our magic number or whatever you call it magic numbers so in order to do that you do DW 0 X a a 5 5 and this is I think that's it uh, turn caps lock off 32 uh, and we can do nasm dash f bin I believe and our input file bootsec.asm and our output file dash o I just like to grab the file name and replace asm with bin oh yeah nasm is not recognized we gotta launch into our tools So you're not going to get any output, but here, let me get rid of that, is our bin. So the bin, you know, Windows says it's one kilobyte, but I think this is just like the minimum size. Let's let show you here, but it says 512 bytes right here. Um, so yeah, it, if everything is good, you should see. this output in like your hex editor or whatever you want to use now we need to run this I think I'm going to go into the tutorial again to see how he does this because I think you gotta do QEMU and then system here we go x86 I remember it now x86 64 and then the name of your bin file And it just says booting from hard disk. You might think this is like lame, but it's <laughs> it's it's a loop, so it's just gonna sit there and do nothing forever. Uh, but yeah, congratulations, you just wrote a boot sector. Now we can start doing something more complicated, cause that was 
pretty easy. So vim bootsec.asm and now let's start doing something uh, like printing hello world. Yeah. Okay, so what we're gonna do oh, gotta go into insert mode. I'm gonna get rid of this loop and you can keep those magic numbers down there. M O V A H comma space zero x zero e this uh, I think sets it to TTY mode so I might just write it there um, that makes it like printable and stuff I don't really know what TTY means all that much I don't have that much experience with terminals but I believe that's what it means okay so now MOVAL this allows you to write like a byte to some place I, in memory. I don't know. But we can write the letter H to start off with the hello world. And then we gotta kind of like execute this. If that makes sense, we have to execute to print it to the screen. So the way we do this int 0x10. And that's it. Uh, now I can do M O V A L E in zero X ten M O V A L L in zero X ten in zero X ten. Why did we do two of them here? Because if you if you look at hello, the word hello, uh, there's two L's in it. And this MOV command only puts, like, this byte L into a certain place in memory. And this INT just prints that place in memory. So what's the point of writing the same byte to memory when we could just print two of the same byte? So MOV AL, we can just continue with this. Hello and int 0x10. And we might want to loop at the end, and the way that you do this this time is just jmp and then a dollar sign. And I think that's it. I close down the space a bit here, quit out of it, and do our little thing again and that's it hello you can modify this you can change it you can do whatever you want with it I think it's very cool so so in this case the assembly file is now big no it's not no it's not never mind it's so it's 211 bytes and our sector is 512 and most of this if we actually want to look at this and that's process hacker in our hex editor oh it's already written in here uh, just for good measure Bop. now you can see instead of that looping code for the first two bytes we got this code so uh, um, if we look at it this like special looking I character or CD right here this is our sort of execute 48 is the byte for H and NC I think and UTF-8 yeah and I believe this then sets uh, to TTY mode, this is like the MOV thingy or whatever. This is the actual thing, the byte. CD is just the is the execute, like we said before, and we got uh, another BO. Again, this is 
What does 10 do? I don't know. I think that's just also with the CD. This BO again that was mentioned back here. This is the MOV thingy, I believe. And then here's E. And if we move on over to the L, actually, yeah, CD and 10 are part of that. If we move on to the L, you can see we have the MOV thing, or like our define bytes, displays bytes, whatever. Or where are we defining or putting bytes? I don't, I don't know a lot about assembly, but here's that L, and we need to write two of them. So we got CD10 and CD10, and here is just our O, and all the way, all the rest of it is just blank bytes and our thing at the end that says it's executable. Cool. That's it. That's all there is. I mean, you can get even more complicated. Go and read the guide if you want further explanation. This just gets you up and running. This is an operating system. Good job. You wrote an operating system. It's not very complicated. It's not Windows 10, but it's definitely something. Oh, goodbye. 16 minutes, huh?